Today I'll be talking about what the Kinsey scale is, its limitations, and how it's evolved into a spectrum today. So the Kinsey scale got its name from Alfred Kinsey, who was a sexologist who created the scale and published it in his book, Sexual Behavior in the Human Male, in 1948. It's simply a binary scale to describe sexual orientation that begins at zero and increases to six, zero being exclusively heterosexual to six being exclusively homosexual. The scale fails to demonstrate sexual fluidity and address sexual identities. As a homosexual man can still be sexually attracted to both genders, it also fails to give bisexuality its own orientation. The X stands for no social sexual contacts or relations, and Kinsey failed to properly address asexuality on the scale. It wasn't until 1980 when Michael Storms conducted a study which led him to create a two-dimensional chart with the X and Y axis depicting heteroeroticism and homoeroticism and was able to finally take into the account of asexuality. Since then, though, asexuality has been able to evolve into its own spectrum. The Kinsey scale also fails to identify people who are transsexual, transgender, and who are intersex. In 1978, Fritz Klein created the Klein Sexual Orientation Grid, which was published in his book, The Bisexual Option. This seven-point scale measures beyond sexual orientation and looks at variables such as emotional preferences, social preferences, lifestyle, and self-identification. It also examines three points in an individual's life, the past, present, and idealistic future. Although these three skills follow the notion that sexual orientation is ever-changing in an individual's life, they all fail to really recognize mixed and or cross-orientation, which is a new, relatively new concept that introduces romantic orientation. For example, a demisexual is someone who experiences sexual attraction only if they have a deep connection with someone or had romantic feelings towards them, or romantic feelings indicating that they are seeking or desiring a romantic relationship with them. Hundreds of charts and spectrums have been created to illustrate both romantic and sexual orientations. And in this slide, I included one I found on Google. Of course, we have a romantic, someone who experiences little to no romantic attraction to people, regardless of gender, by romantic, attracted to people of two or more genders, gray romantic, experiencing romantic attraction infrequently, and demi-romantic, romantic, you experience romantic attraction infrequently. And it's only after developing a strong emotional connection to someone when you do. The same pretty much applies for hetero, homo, and bisexual peoples. And when it comes to pan-romantic, this is when someone is romantically attracted to people of all gen all genders, and polyromantic is attracted to people of many, not all genders. Moving past orientation within the spectrum, we do start to move into attractions and how there's terms for all kinds of certain types of attractions. For example, there's aesthetic attraction, which is being attracted to someone based on how they look. There is emotional attraction, wanting an emotional connection with someone, and platonic attraction, wanting to be friends with someone, and sensual and physical attraction, wanting to touch, hold, or cuddle someone. There are at least 46 different terms that are currently being used to describe orientations, behaviors, and attraction it's for anyone on the spectrum. And on this chart, I would say it does a pretty good job at illustrating a s the spectrums for sexual identity, sexual behavior, sexual orientation, and it also adds gender roles slash expressions, so you can identify as masculine, androgynous, or feminine, and of course identity and your biological sex. I would like to add that there was a term that I did not see on the spectrum I just showed where this term is actually becoming pretty popular and frequent in use in today's age. 
and that term is non-binary and you can find it on the right side it says refers to someone who does not identify as exclusively male or female and pretty much falls under gender roles and expressions and it is also said that it can fall under the transgender umbrella since many non-binary people identify with a gender that is different from their assigned sex. And in this slide, we just see the flags of gender identities. Spectrum charts continue to be modified to represent everyone on it as best as it can. Bill Condon, the director of the movie Kinsey that we watched, said, Kinsey put people in boxes to prove that you can't put people in boxes. And I would like to add that although Kinsey's scale is outdated, it's still important because it paved the way toward the spectrums we see today. Thank you for watching, and at the end is the sources I used to help me with this presentation. Thank you.